All right, let's move into the streets of London, where my colleague Juliana Olanka will be talking to us from our London studio. Good morning, Juliana. Well, the British Chambers of Commerce uh, coronavirus business impact tracker shows that uh, most firms could be ready to restart business with just three weeks' notice. What were the findings of this survey? What plans are businesses making to come back to work? Uh, good morning, Timothy. Yes, well, the British... Uh... Chamber of Commerce, they spoke to about 540 businesses just at the end of last month. And uh, as you said, the overwhelming majority of the businesses that they spoke to uh, said that it would take them less than uh, three weeks to get back to work. In fact, the smallest of the businesses said it will take them uh, less than a week. And I think really what this uh, result is showing us is that businesses are eager to get their staff back at their desks and they want to start, um, you know, kicking off the economy again. I think one of the most overwhelming um, conclusions from the survey is that uh, businesses are really um, asking for navigation from the government. We know that uh, on Thursday, the three week the second three-week restriction comes to an end. On Sunday, Prime Minister Boris Johnson will be outlining just exactly how this country is going to get back to work and back to uh, the way we were before uh, pre-COVID. And that couldn't come any sooner for businesses because there has been some leaked reports out of the discussions that uh, the business secretary, Alok Sharma, has been having with some big business lobby groups. And this talks about social distancing, the closing off of canteens, making sure there are hand sanitizer stations available everywhere and also as well phased uh, working hours. We know that most people work nine to five in the city of London and tubes are overwhelmingly stretched. There are about four million people that use uh, the tube in London every single day. It's impossible for that to happen uh, but we do know that the government do want people to get back to work. So as soon as this information is given to businesses then they can prepare uh, for staff to start coming back. All right, now, Virgin Atlantic has joined British Airways in announcing plans to end operation at Gatwick Airport and even plans to cut more than 3,000 jobs in the UK. What a blow for the aviation industry. It's a, it's a huge blow for the aviation industry and a huge blow for Gatwick Airport, which is um, Heathrow, London's, the UK's second largest airport. They see thousands, they did see thousands of flights coming out and in every week and of course it's been a tumultuous week it's not just been um it's not just been virgin atlantic we've also seen ryanair the budget airline they said that they'll be cutting a uh, staff last week british airways said they'll be cutting 12,000 staff and in tune with what virgin atlantic said uh, british airways did say that they're not sure they can't see uh, themselves going back um, to Gatwick and also as well the aerospace manufacturer Rolls-Royce, they've also said they're culling jobs. I think for Virgin this comes as a big blow but maybe no surprises to most people. Virgin Group at the moment are in a £500 million bid to try and get a bailout from the government. The government have actually rejected this, the British government have rejected this because they do believe that Virgin Group have enough shareholders or can access enough funds to stop them from receiving uh, this money. So they are speaking to several investors. And yes, you know, the, the casualty of such um, a, a failing is, of course, staff. So there are going to be over 3,000 staff. This is about a third of their workforce. Many of them are going to be people that work at Gatwick. And of course, many of them are going to be people uh, that work within the flights and uh, within the call centre. So it's a massive blow. And it just goes to show we're now starting to hear about the job cuts and uh, Virgin Atlantic said they don't expect to see passenger numbers reach the way they were for at least three years. Now, are there other corporate news to keep an eye on today? And um, what are the opening numbers saying? Well, the opening numbers, the FTSE actually opened about six points higher. I believe sterling is trading about 0.11% down against the dollar. I think one pound will get you about $1.24 at the moment. I think one of the biggest corporate stories that are coming out of the UK is that the final PMI figures, um, these figures are coming in for the construction industry. PMI, uh, which tells the state of your economy and how healthy it is, have been pretty grim 
over the past couple of days. Services came in at about 12.1%. Um, usually you kind of want a 50 mark. Anything above 50 shows that you're expanding. Below that uh, shows a contraction. In fact, the construction figures may even be in already. One of the biggest risers on the FTSE is Ocado. They're the online grocer. Their shares were up 3.6% because they announced in a trading report that their online sales has risen by 40%, which is uh, to no surprises. And also AstraZeneca, the pharmaceutical company, their shares are up 1.6% at early trade in Jimmy. We'll get more update on those later in the day, Juliana.